down. And it's given Italy a defensive line so far. They've, they've cut their, most, their last two lines to about five. They've got three in, but they're only about five metres out from their own He's in. goal line. And stolen. O'Connell has it. Now the drive comes in. And 40,000 Irish fans behind them, but it's stalled for a moment. Get out, too! Italy desperately defending and trying to guess where that ball might appear. There's the drive over, surely. Is it down? Yes! I would have their prize. Well, it was the open attack of expansive, attacking expansive rugby that got them there, but it was the percentages that got them over the try line in the end. It was simple, it was effective, it was almost inevitable from the stolen ball by Paul O'Connell. Well, he stole the line at ball, did he finish it off as well? This is it. Just gets in ahead of Parise. Italy then do put a man on the ground, which is Ongaro just on the wrong side. It's Perugio. It's up well, yes. Looks like Flannery might be claiming that one. Debut score it was Jerry Flannery, in Six Nations debut with the first try of the game. The way play had been going, you could almost say it's a little bit against the run of play, and you also say that I might have expected one of their three quarters to go over the, the manner in which they've, they've started this game, but nonetheless, they'll be pleased with that. Certainly attacking from set pieces has been an awful lot more profitable for them so far. Any time they've tried to move it from, from deep, from rocks and moles, they find themselves in trouble. Seven points for Ireland, and things are looking rather more healthy for the home side in Dublin. This is a try out to the Keith Wood. Forward there. And just about got it done with his, his left arm. Just rolling a gar in there in the middle of that mall as well. It's a rather unexpected sight. <laughs> what he was doing there, I don't know.